Hi, Dizzy Dog. Hi, everybody out there. Hi, Laura from Cleveland. Hi, Caitlin. Laura, what is your weather like out there? We have had, hi there, Maury Classroom. We have had what we would call in California um, kind of sort of a winter, and now it is already warming up again. So don't know what it's like in Cleveland, but we are definitely feeling the sunshine over here in California. We'd love to spread it your way. Hey, Coach B. Hi, Chevron Centers. Good to see you. Everyone give a, a nice warm hello for Coach B. It was... 65 degrees. Oh, okay. Hey, that's not too bad. Ooh, 43 in New York. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm made for the cold. Um, I, I, I don't know. My friends call me McShivers. I, I get a little too cold when it's when it just drops below 70. I'm shivering. People crack up out here. We're already in our boots and our scarves and the sun's still shining. Hi there. Ooh, I bet. Oh, gosh. I wish I could spread the sunshine love over there, guys. So thank you guys for joining me. I know this is not my normal time. I uh, My schedule's kind of screwed up because of parent conferences, but I definitely didn't want to miss our weekly scope, and I look forward to seeing you guys every week. So I'm Andrea Schindler from Whole Brain Teaching, Whole Brain Teachers United, and I'm a kindergarten teacher. Um, this is my 14th year with Whole Brain Teaching and teaching in the classroom 10 years in kindergarten. It's been a couple years in third grade and a year in second grade and so I'm so glad you guys are joining me here and uh, for those of you who might be new to whole brain teaching we have our whole brain teaching website wholebrainteaching.com where there is a ton of free downloads where can we watch previous webcasts um, previous scopes they are now on catch so if you go to catch k-a-t-c-h that is the place now that is grabbing these scopes and saving them for more than 24 hours. So that's actually really good news. So it, you have 24 hours to watch, and then now you can go to catch. So yes, thank you, Coach. So um, thank you guys for joining me on this journey. We've been meeting here every week talking about various topics. And uh, several months ago, Coach and I were noticing many of you saying that you were really wanting to boost up the participation. And, oh, <laughs> have fun for that. Have fun on your margarita day. And, yes, catch me on the replay. Hi, Dana. Um, so we just noticed on the scopes there was a lot of you asking about participation. So week by week by week, we've been talking about different strategies to bump up the participation. And we've been currently working on the scoreboard for several weeks because our scoreboard has many, many levels. Hi there from Ohio. So I am taking you guys through the levels that we have. But Coach B and I have some new levels that we're going to be um, sharing with you that Coach has given me permission to share with you as well well as some back pocket levels that I've used this year. So I'm happy to share those with you. Um, what I'm going to ask is I'm going to get through teaching you guys all about level five. My goal is to shorten these a little bit because I keep you guys here for a little bit too long. I want to um, just try to keep us under maybe 10, 15 minutes. That's my goal. Coach B, that's our goal. We're going to see how that goes. And so we're only going to talk about, oh, hi, Daryl and Kim. Hi. Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. How are you? I'm, I'm saying hi. Um, so we're going to try to keep it to that time frame. If you guys can wait and hold your questions to the end, because I'm really bad with this multitasking and reading your comments and your questions, and I want to answer all of them. But the thing about scope is sometimes they disappear, so it's hard for me to catch them. So if we can wait for the questions at the end, then that would be awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to do a big review here. Hi there. Oh, you're new to WBT. Hey there. I'm glad you joined us and get ready for the journey. It'll be good. Practice squad still in swing. Hey, you know what? Don't show them your emotions, Caitlin. Just keep it very non-emotional. Just tell them you're needing a little bit more practice, I will give you that extra practice time. So you're helping them out. Don't let them see you sweat. Remember guys, teaching is a performing art. We're always smiling on the outside, no matter how we're feeling on the inside. Good job, Caitlin. Keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to take you over here to my board. Mind you guys, 
One of our great classroom engagers and motivators is our scoreboard game. But with our scoreboard game, we want to emphasize that it's a game. And the game is thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher. When we're very first starting out, we're just doing smiley versus frowny. And the only reward is bragging rights. The next level, level two, is boys versus girls, or if you have, um, maybe you have way too many boys and not enough girls, or vice versa, you could do team versus team. So left side of the room versus right side of the room. Or you could do, you know, red and orange row against green and blue row, whichever you'd like to do, team versus team. And again, only for bragging rights. Yes, middle school is a little bit different too because you guys are talking about periods as opposed to, and then again, uh, you're breaking down period by period, and then on top of that, you're gonna have a little bit different for how you move down your levels. Level three is boys versus girls or team versus team. Only this time now, we have whichever wins, the winning team gets to line up first. Then level four, we have blue marks equal double. So now we're gonna move to level five. So at level five, this is our game we call the teacher versus the students. So how does that work? Well, with teacher versus students, if the kids are thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels lower, then there's gonna be a point on the teacher side. Now, since I'm kindergarten, two grade levels lower, we say preschool. So this is preschool side, okay? Then if they're thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher is when they're gonna get a point on their side. So for me, for kindergarten, that's gonna be second grade. Okay, so here's our scoreboard. Now remember guys, as we've talked about before, we're always looking for specific skills. So you don't wanna forget to write your skills on the board. These skills can be behavioral, these skills can be academic, they can be behavioral and academic. And as the year goes on, you're gonna add more skills to your list. So you might start out at the beginning of the year, one skill at a time. But as the year goes on, you might be able to add two that you're looking for behavior for behavior and then from there maybe you're going to do one behavior and one academic there's maximum flexibility guys which is what we love with whole brain teaching and it's what's going to keep our kids on their toes so for example i might be saying okay guys today the skills i'm looking for is i'm looking for triple whammy sentences in our oral writing so there's my academic skill And I'm also looking for laser eyes on me, which is one I love because my students get very distracted. So anytime I'm seeing students that are thinking, looking, and acting two grades level, like three, <laughs> give me a, you're still cool. It's another day of parent conferences, but my mouth felt just like it was working a little bit better today, guys. I might have overestimated myself. So again, those skills, triple whammy sentence, okay? Triple whammy sentence is two grade levels higher. So it, guess what, guys? If we're not, thank you, if we're not speaking in complete sentences or we're not speaking in a triple whammy sentence, then that's gonna be a point on the teacher's side. If we're not using our laser eyes, if our eyes are not laser focused on the teacher, if they're anywhere else and they're not two grade levels higher, then that's going to be a point on the teacher's side. So your skills can be whatever you want them to be, but hone in on specific skills. This is a great way to do your problem solving for little things that are happening in your classroom. When you're having breakdowns in the classroom, hone in exactly on what you want from the kids and always try to find something that you can focus in on for the day or even for chunks of the day if you see maximum improvement. So the best part about this is when the kids are giving you a point, here's the thing, guys. If the kids are not doing what you want them to do, or they're not thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher, 
that's giving the teacher a point. So here's the best thing, guys. We're not scolding. We're not reprimanding, which is what we say in whole brain teaching. We always say we practice. We do not scold. We always say we're smiling on the outside. No matter how we're feeling on the inside, there's always a positive way to... Um, to recognize your kids, but also to redirect your kids. So we're always going to look for the positive way to do that. But the greatest thing with this is, guess what, guys? When your kids are not performing the way you want them to perform, you get to say the kindness word, guys. I don't know how many of you out there, if you're not following Coach B, and I'm sure you are, but you need to be following Coach B at Chris Biffle, because let me tell you, we're talking about character education, and Mendes is kindness, but we get to use kindness all over the place with this, because our way we show kindness, the best way to show it when we start out is we say to the kids, thank you, and they say, you're welcome. Well, guess what? When they're giving you a point over here, oh, I see I didn't have all of my friends thinking and looking and acting like a second grader with their laser eyes. Thank you for giving me a point. And we go on this side, and that's the mighty groan. The kids say, oh, because they don't want to give us a point, okay? So anytime they're not thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher, guys, this is the perfect time to practice that kindness. You get to say, Thank you for the point. And they get to say back to you, you're welcome. So do you see the difference here, guys? Instead of it being, oh, you guys aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, you guys aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not paying attention. You're not using your triple whammy sentence, which is all very negative. Instead, we're able to turn around and say, thank you for giving me a point. Now, when you see the students thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher, you can say, oh, my goodness. You guys got a point. You guys beat me. And that's when they get to have their one second party where they say, oh, yeah. Here's the best part, guys. Remember that teaching is a performing art. And we have to remember that every day. Like I've said before, I'm always smiling on the outside no matter how I'm feeling on the inside. That's the beauty of this game. Coach B, this is genius. Because over here, that used to be our saddy side, what would have been the saddy point, our mighty groan. But instead, I'm thanking students for giving me a point. I'm saying, thank you. And then when they get a point, I'm saying, oh, man, you guys got a point. I can't believe it. Oh, man, you guys are beating me. Oh, wow, guys, check you out. And guess what? They get really worked up about it, and they're so excited, and they think that they're beating you. But guess what? When they're beating you, you're actually winning. That's the beauty of the teacher versus students game. So, again, we're working for two grade levels higher. When it's two grade levels higher, it's a point on the student side. When it's um, two grade levels lower, then it's a point for your team. Show them kindness by saying Thank you. And let me tell you, we wouldn't be anywhere without going back to our old teams up here. And I know you guys have been watching me with the huddle up and where the teams get to pick their, their cheers. So the only problem I've run into is when I get to teachers versus students, some of those kids still really want to make up a cheer. So this is the best time to bring in your leaders, guys. Your leaders are going to be people in your class. It's not a job. That's something I want to say to you guys that's very important. Leaders are not jobs. Because with a job, that might have been that poster you set up at the beginning of the year where someone gets to be the paper pass router. Another person gets to be the pencil sharpener. Another person gets to put the papers in the cubbies, and everybody rotates with those jobs. That's not what a leader is here, guys. A leader is someone who's always thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher. We have a leadership lottery, and we have a leadership lottery box that I'll talk to you guys about later, but let me tell you, with leaders, you're going to tell them, I